I'm here because I want you to remind others of the power. And I want to make it very clear to all the press, everybody, I'm not here because I'm making some grandstand because I'm thinking about running myself. I don't want to run, okay? <laughs> I'm not trying to test any waters. <laughs> don't want to go in those waters. I'm here today because of Stacey Abrams. And I'm here today, and I'm here today because of the men and because of the women who were lynched, who were humiliated, who were discriminated against, who were suppressed, who were repressed and oppressed for the right for the equality at the polls. And I want you to know that their blood has seeped into my DNA, and I refuse to let their sacrifices be in vain. I refuse. And I'm here today. Don't let nobody turn you around. their sacrifices be in vain. I'm here today because, like a lot of young people, I didn't take voters, voting seriously until around my mid-20s. And around my mid-20s, I had, had, the, had the privilege of hearing Reverend Otis Moss Jr., who's a preacher. Y'all know him? Preacher. Preacher in, 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 in Cleveland, Ohio. And I heard him tell the story of his father, of Otis Moss Sr., who right here in Georgia's Troop County got up in the morning and put on his only suit and his best tie. And he walked six miles to the voting poll location he was told to go to in LaGrange. And when he got there, after walking six miles in his good suit and tie, they said, boy, you at the wrong place. You at the wrong place. You need to go over to Mountville. So he walked another six miles to Mountville. And when he got there, they said, boy, you at the wrong place. You need to go to the Rosemont School. And I picture him walking from dawn to dusk in his suit, his feet tired, getting to the Rosemont School. And they say, boy, you too late. The polls are closed, and he never had a chance to vote. By the time the next election came around, he had died. So when I go to the polls and I cast my ballot, I cast it for a man I never knew. I cast it for Otis Moss Sr., who walked 18 miles one day just for the chance to vote. And when I go into the polls, I cast the vote for my grandmother, Hattie Mae Lee, who died in 1963 before the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and never had a chance to vote. I vote for her. And when I stand in the polls, I do what Maya Angelou says, I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. For all those who paved the way that we might have the right to vote. And for anybody here who has an ancestor who didn't have the right to vote, and you are choosing not to vote wherever you are in this state, in this country, you are dishonoring your family. You are disrespecting and disregarding their legacy, their suffering and their dreams when you don't vote. So honor your legacy, honor your legacy, honor your right to, to citizenship in this, which is the greatest country in the world, the greatest country in the world. And the right to vote is like like, like the crown we all get to wear. Maya used to say, baby, your crown has been paid for, so put it on your head and wear it. So your crown's 
been paid for. The right to vote is your crown. So this is a tight race here in Georgia. This is tight. And there are tight races all over this country that depend on all of us giving honor to our greatest democratic right and privilege. So let your vote make the difference. Let your vote count. Let your vote speak for you. If you're a woman, let me just talk to the women for a minute. If you're a woman, you need to recognize it hasn't even been 100 years since we even had the right to vote, since we were considered a piece of property. You couldn't even own a piece of property. I love land so much, and I think, boy, if I was born at the, at the turn of the century, 20th century, I wouldn't even have the right to own the land without your father or your husband saying it was so. You didn't have the right to even take care of yourself. So you didn't have a voice, and now we do. We as win women people, we as women people, need to stand united and vote our values. Vote your values. Vote your conscience. All this noise, all the noise, you just can't get away from it. You turn on the TV, on the web. It's so much noise and crazy talk. All the vitriol in the ads. You know what? They are designed to confuse and confound you with fear. That's what they're done. They're designed to confound you with fear. They are not designed for people with discernment. Women, people, we have discernment. And when you know the right thing and you can feel it, you can feel what is the right thing to do, you can't be influenced by propaganda and fear. So now is the time for discernment. And only when we unite as sisters, and I don't just mean sisters, I mean sisters, black sisters, brown sisters, white sisters, Asian sisters, LGBTQ sisters. When we all unite, I know for sure a change is going to come. So I'm here today to support a change maker. She's a woman who dared believe that she could change the state of Georgia. And the, she is dynamic. She is so inspired and inspiring. She's bold. She's bold. She's bold and bodacious. She's a Georgia warrior woman. Ladies and gentlemen, Stacey Abrams. All right, Oprah Winfrey. She doesn't need her last name. That's Oprah, Marietta, Georgia. Stacey Abrams, the Democratic candidate for governor, a woman trying to make history. She would be the nation's first female African-American governor if she wins what is now a very, very tight race heading into the final five days in the state of Georgia. Oprah down there are trying to generate a turnout, and we bring it back into the room here. Uh, she's an independent. She's there to campaign for a Democrat. I bet a lot of Republicans are watching that saying, I wish we had an Oprah. Um, whatever your politics are at home, just in terms of how effective, she knows the needs in this race. Number one, she's in the suburbs, not Atlanta proper. Number two, she says African-Americans, get out. Don't disrespect your family heritage when you couldn't vote. Get out and vote. And then sisters. She said, not sisters, sisters. White sisters, Asian sisters, brown sisters, Latino sisters, LGBT sisters, women vote. The, the suburban vote, the women vote, the African-American vote will answer the question, can Stacey Abrams make history? 